younger, say, um, and just a random person out in the U.S., obviously you're going to find that there are some political differences. So the question is, where is the you know where is the cutoff? Like if I picked someone three years younger than me, would they also have the same differences? And I think I think we really would find that there is a gradient that the younger um, that the younger you are, the more in tune with social media activism, the more willing I think to engage with it is the big thing. Um, because one thing I really would like to point out is that understanding social media activism, I think, you know, obviously there's this kind of popular perception that like, oh, older people don't understand social media. They don't understand how it works. But I don't think that's true. I mean, I think older people, and I mean, we see, we have a president who uses Twitter all the time. You know, he's always tweeting. He knows how it works and he knows how to get his message out on it, but he's using it in a different way. So I think what we're seeing is more of a transformation in how uh, you engage with social media, um, you know, using it for organizing a school walkout, right? I mean, that's crazy. That's something that, like, and I, see, I do see what you're saying when you're saying you don't understand how, like, how they use social media. Because, like, I, I can look back at when I was in high school, which is only a couple of years ago, and think, would I have been able to engage with a campaign to walk out of schools across the country? It's and, just, yeah, it's, yeah become it's, integ it's become integrated into their lives. Yeah. And I, I, I think that the cutoff, and I'm not a social scientist, and I know that there are people far more intelligent who have written on this and have come up with their own dates. And it seems to be like 1995 to 2003 is that – is that cut off for like when you're a, a plural or a generation Z. But like, I think the closer you get to um, being the closer you get to the release of like the iPhone or like generalized, like popularity of smartphones, the, the more um, grouped into that pluralist group you are because it become by the time that you could get a cell phone, it's become normal, normalized. And I know that, you know, again, splitting hairs like, Oh, I had a flip phone is, is a, is like very like small, but think about the, what well, I no, can I do mean, with a phone yeah. versus what my sister can do with a phone. My sister can log onto, you know, any form of social media, any any website, anywhere she is, and learn about something automatic, like immediately, and also um, constantly stay tuned into um, poli political and socio and socioeconomic. I, um, discussions and arguments like she's always watching youtube sometimes she's watching youtube for dumb stuff sometimes she's watching uh jake paul or whatever even though i think after all that thing he kind of went away like he, he, but I, when i was young growing up i watched youtube for like uh, old great yeah. like i didn't watch it for for political messaging which is why i think but again it's not there's no i don't think there's any hard cut off you know certainly you know, the smartphone is a transformative technology, but we got smartphones. You know, we got them late high school, you know, in high school. But they're getting them in, like, middle school. I agree. That's so a huge change in the development of a political ideology. Yeah, no, and there's earlier engagement, and so it's it's a gradient, you know? Way there's, go. But, but yeah. there's no, there's no, no <laughs> we can't say, you know, on this day, in this year, we changed from one generation to another. You know, that's that's the folly of this kind of demographic uh, tallying is it doesn't is when you really put a microscope to it, it doesn't make sense on that scale. Um, we should we should be speaking in terms of broad trends, um, except in the case of really, really well defined kind of anomalies like the baby boomer generation. And even that isn't really well defined. Let's be real. The baby boom, as we call it, lasted a decade and a half. You have both the both the people who voted for Nixon in the droves and the hippies under that label. Yeah, but the hippies were never as... I, we can get into the political history of, you know, <laughs> American leftism. The hippies were <laughs> is what is my opinion. Um, but we won't get into that. But I mean, yeah, no, there's definitely... The baby boomer, as the baby boomers as a generation, I think it's very large and it's certainly more diverse than it's perceived to be in kind of popular. I mean, popular culture is like baby boomers are out and out, just uniformly Republican, which evil, evil, yeah, which obviously isn't true. But I think you there can is a lot to say about how, how baby boomers 
because they're living longer and they're retiring later, they have really kind of stalled the, you know, economic ladder. People in Generation X can't become the CEO or the COO or something because someone born in, you know, 1950 is still there. Yeah. Let's not forget, by the way, that the two people on the top of the Democratic Party polls for 2020 are both going to be over 80 on Election Day. So that reaches into the political Could you name them for us? All right. Call them out. uh, Mr. Joe Biden and Mr. Bernie Sanders. Yeah, but here's the thing is I think they're both going to be dead by then. Well, (laughs) what about Sherrod Brown? I wouldn't go that far. Well, you want to talk about Sherrod Brown, right? No, I want want to talk about Sherrod Brown. I want to gladly talk about Sherrod Brown. William, what's your comment that you're going to make? So I I, I, I wanted to address kind of the couple of things. Since we keep talking about like one-off circumstances, very personal anecdotal uh, stories, and I think that's always a very dangerous thing to do. Because as I uh, look, m- many people love to use the and Ryan, I'm going to pick on you here a little bit. Use the anecdote, yay, um, my sister or my younger right. brother, like that kind of thing. That's often the person who I would cite as well. Is I have a younger sister, so I would just note her and before you can conti- before you continue, I would like to say my sister and all of her little f- and all of her friends who are always at my house. Well, I mean, for Do me, we it's, all have it- younger sisters in like high school. I think so. Yeah. My sister is a so let's freshman. Do, let's do a let's do a uh, you know double blind step. We've got a repetition of our uh, you know experiences. Well, uh, but I do want to address the kind of thing like because for me it's uh, my sister and her friends, and my sister is part of her, like okay, I'm about to sound very bad here, but part of her is being defined against me. Like, and I think that's the case for all younger that's siblings. That's definitely true. Yeah, is they get defined against their older siblings and. Even if it doesn't actually happen, like even if the parent is like, no, I don't actually really consider that, the younger sibling feels that. Um, so I think a, a huge part of my sister's definition of herself is against me. I am not connected in with social media. I, I, I'm about to be very straightforward here. I find it abhorrent. I don't have any um, social media accounts. I don't use it. So like clearly. And it makes it a b- <laughs> to get in contact with him. Let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> I like it. But off it, the grid. Yeah, so very much off the grid. But what I do notice is that the people who you choose to associate with on social media tend to be the people who you would just agree with. And it's also kind of the case in regular life. Um, now, th- that following through, I would like to rather address the economic and technological consideration that Joe also just kind of shot down saying, I don't think they exist. I would disagree. I think they do exist. I think very much how you live and how you can mechanically communicate with other people does change how you can be generationally defined. I mean, that's true. If we want to talk about generate, if we want to talk about uh, phones as a technological divide, uh, the baby boomers were arguably the first generation to be connected by phone, you know, widespread Uh, to a a widespread with uh, mostly landline connections at the time. And then you start to see, to a lesser extent, Generation X to start advents of the very bare minimums of cell phones. Like, Well, I think that the big thing with that in regards to phone technology is the invention of a push dial system and then phones be... <laughs> okay, are we going to have a discussion <laughs> no, 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 no. phone oh. design? No, no. My, no well, my parents, were, my parents have talked to me a lot about how um, you know, they were born in... Both of them were born in 1966, and they talked about how big of a deal it was that, one, they got color television, and number two, they... Um, they got, uh, you know, they got rid of a rotary dial phone, and they could, uh, and phones became cheap because they no longer were metal they, or, or like really quality, like almost porcelain. They were like cheap plastic. Yeah. So, are we making an argument collectively for <laughs> communications technology as the defining hallmarks of different generations? I would, I would sort address, I, I would address that so because I think really where the millennials begin is, uh, you know, Al Gore's "I invented the internet." No, but <laughs> the millennials are pretty much universally agreed to begin 1985. Even though I've done a lot of reading on this, there is sort of like disagreement amongst millennials who want like. Between like 1985 and like 1990, that's kind of like a very gray area because it's just the end of Generation X, and a lot of those people have the same political. And if we're gonna, if you're gonna group it based off of politics and socioeconomic ideas, they share a lot in common with Generation X, but they also share a lot in common with millennials. Right. But overall, millennials and Generation X don't really get along. See, I think it's hard to define it though by politics, and here's why it's hard to define it by politics. Most generational gaps seem to be in the area of 15 to 25 years as, as as base as i can tell and they probably go longer they go shorter at times we have flip-flopping presidency 
eight years, eight years, eight years, four years, eight years, four years. It just flip-flops between political parties. So I don't think we can use politics to define generations. But the interesting thing is when we get do get realigning elections, like big changes, they do tend to happen in that uh, in that time frame. I mean, look at the difference then, between But then I would argue, I, I would argue Johnson. it's not the president that we need to be focusing on. It would be the opinion of the country as a whole, I think, i.e. I think the country as a whole. No, 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 no. Not, not the president, but rather like the house if you wanted to look at that see like when there's a I huge think, well, the, shift house in the house is well, not it's, representative it's, of the people's wills I, I we think, saw pennsylvania there are general there are general consensus i i mean like the uh the shift of southern whites from the democratic party to the republican party i think you could argue was largely a generational shift and I agree, but that's a massive change in the House of Representatives. I, th- I don't, hang on, hang on. I don't all think all the reps. And there. Well, I'm saying, when I'm saying political, I, I think more. Of, I'm not talking about who's been elected. I'm talking about political agenda and, and political ideology. That's a good point. Because, well. for example, millennials and Generation X have been the largest, you know, pushers of gay marriage and transgender rights, and millennials far more for transgender rights than Gen Xers. And that's that they've shown that many times about who isn't more in favor of it, who's not. And the baby boomers have almost universally been like, no. Yes. So yeah. it, that's a huge social political difference. That's not that's not a gradient. That's a sharp difference between people. And then one of the one of the big arguments for why, you know, bring it back to the original conversation about this Parkland shooting about why it's actually staying on the top on you know on topic it's not just going away is because for the first time you have these plurals you have this gener- generation Z that's keeping it on the mindset of America that they're actually sick of just letting it go away the millennials when they you know experience Columbine, when they experience school shootings, they increase their security. They increase the you know the mindset that okay this might happen, and this generation is like no, we're not dealing with that. We're we're going to actively try to change it. And one of the good parallels to it, I think, is the Tuskegee Airmen. And I know that Joe's probably going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? But if you think about it, the Tuskegee Airmen, part of the greatest generation, right? They flew. Um, and fought in Europe and were fought with distinction and they were and they were brilliant fighters and they were uh, and they served their country very well they came back to America and they were completely um, they were segregated again they were discriminated against and they were not thanked for their service in the war the next generation 10 to 15 years later you get the civil rights movement you get the generation that's not that that didn't actually go and fight in World War II but was sick of the response that they had and was no longer satisfied with growing up in it and then they decide to change it. I think that you're going to see, and I think that it's a big distinction between our generation, or I guess, again, we're, what we could talk about a little bit later is we're kind of on the in-between, us four, but like the millennials, the typical, you know, ho- hotty toddy hoity-toity millennial, and... and hoity-toity, and that's an interesting adjective. The, the, yuppie, the yuppie millennials and... And the, this current generation, my sister, you're, you're all little siblings and all of their friends and the plurals and the people currently in high school is that they're sick of growing up with things like a lack of gun control, a lack of transgender rights, a lack of a lot of things that they think are absolutely integral and should have happened. And they're so going to actually try to change it. So if I understand your argument right is – your argument, if I understand it right, is that the kind of – the public failings of the previous generation – or the public issues with the previous generations period get, or at least if not fixed, at least inform the ethos of the next generation. They they define themselves in opposition to the injustices of the previous. Yes, and I think that holds true for both the Gen X, based off of the baby boomers. If you look at the baby boomers, all pretty much what they were one hundred percent concerned about was growing the economy and creating, you know, the typical is like expanding Actually, suburbia that's a pretty that convincing th- argument and, 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 and yeah. you could even say the same thing about the boomers in opposition to the greatest generation yeah and, it, yeah. and, and then if you think about gen x they're not so much focused about their their whole you know if you watched 80s television shows enough like i did growing up it was like i, I sort of against that it, it was it was a it was you know a revol- it was the counterculture against that which was different from the counterculture of the 70s it was a, it was a lot more um, resistance to the baby boomers, but at the same time, like there is, I think each generation is defined uh, in opposition, or at least uh, building upon the work of the previous generation. And I know that sounds like very general, like of course, but I think the opposition is what really defines the generation, uh, the social, like the ide- ideology of that generation, because like 
our, the Generation Z, the plurals, could define themselves based off of something else, but they seem to specifically be about political change to, and a very anti-